Optimal gain staging is the secret to a clean and impactful sounding mix and master. If you gain stage correctly, you can turn a muddy mix like this into a punchy and great sounding track like that. So if you produce music in a genre like techno, house, EDM, and you want to mix your own songs, then you just have to understand gain staging and implement it in the right way. But here's the problem. Most tutorials on this topic are confusing as hell, they overcomplicate things, or they don't even show you a proper way of how you can use gain staging in every session in an easy and understandable workflow. So in this tutorial, I'm going to share with you my super effective but simple gain staging method. I'm going to explain why this even matters. And also I'm going to show you how you can implement it in your own workflow. Let's jump in. If you are new to this channel, my name is Philip from Pick Yourself and I produce, mix and master music full time in my Berlin based studio. I specialize in electronic music and I have a free gift for you. It's called the Finisher Framework. It helps you finish at least one great sounding song per month by implementing a system that does the heavy lifting for you. Three simple steps, anyone can implement them right away. It's a super deep but short to consume free resource. You can get it at pickyourself.com slash framework and the link is also in the description. Now let's talk about gain staging in a way that is effective and not overwhelming at all. So first of all, you might be wondering what even is gain staging? So here is my simple definition. Gain staging is optimizing the levels from your audio source to the following effects in your chain so that each processor can work with an optimal signal level. And the final goal of gain staging is that all of the individual channels of your mix are hitting the mix bus, aka your master fader or master channel, exactly at the perfect level so that you can either run it into your own mastering chain or you have enough headroom to send it to an external mastering engineer who does the master for you and can work with a really well gain staged, perfectly balanced mix. But why does gain staging even matter? It is true that it used to be much more important in the analog domain. So when we were still recording, mixing and mastering purely analog with mixing boards, with outboard effects and then into tape machines, this was a really crucial aspect because if you don't have a great so-called signal to noise ratio, then you run into big problems in the final output. Now, to give you an example of this, let's say you record a synthesizer using a preamp and an analog mixing board, and then you feed it into an EQ and into a compressor, and the original recording is relatively quiet. The problem is you have a really bad signal to noise ratio because all of the noise floor of the analog equipment is feeding into the musical signal. And therefore, if you then compress it, you boost certain frequencies and do all the processing afterwards, feed it into a tape machine to kind of print it, the problem is that all of these noise floors stack on top of each other and there's not much musical content left. So it just sounds fuzzy basically. Now, if you have a really high signal to noise ratio in the beginning, but you're recording too hot, you get other problems in the analog domain because one processor feeding too hot into the next processor creates probably unwanted saturation due to the circuits that are involved, depending on what analog design you're going into. If you then record it on tape, also if you push tape machines too hard, you get a certain saturation that is sometimes wanted, but sometimes also not wanted. And so in the analog days, you had to maintain a perfect signal to noise ratio, not too low, but also not too high. Now, what does this mean for the digital domain now? If you work in a DAW like Ableton Live, FL Studio, Cubase, Logic, whatever your DAW of choice is, you have less problems with the signal to noise ratio. Typically, if you work with VST instruments or samples that are already recorded at a great signal to noise ratio. And so the only thing that you have to really watch out for is to not go over the zero dBFS threshold. Now in the analog domain, you can go into hot levels and sometimes it's sounding good. In the digital domain, if you go above zero dBFS, it probably just sounds distorted and bad. But here is the big problem. In the analog domain, you need to know the sweet spots of your equipment. There's just no way around that. In the digital domain though, we became kind of agnostic to the problem and we just work with wildly different levels and send whatever into our plugins and we just hope for the best. Now this creates serious problems and I'm going to prove this to you in our session now. So let me quickly play this to you and explain what's wrong with it. So this is a great example of problematic gain staging in the digital domain. And I get a lot of productions sent to me for mastering that are 
yeah, done in this way. And I know exactly what problems you then run into when you try to master this. So the first thing I want you to pay attention to is your overall headroom on the master channel. So when I go here to my master channel, I have the Ableton limiter here and the Fefilter Pro L2 is just like a safety limiter after that. I prefer the sound of that. I'm quickly going to mute this. No, the Ableton limiter here is working quite a bit already with this material. <laughs> And the reason for that is that we just don't have any headroom left. The signal is already pushed so high from the individual channels that there's no headroom left on the master channel. Now, what most producers do at this point is that they just adjust the faders in their session. So like this, I bring everything down a little bit. Let's see. And now it looks like I have enough headroom left. But that's not entirely true because problems in the sound don't only come from what's feeding into the master channel, there's also a problem in the individual channels in terms of gain staging because it still sounds muddy even if I don't run it into the limiter as hot. So just as a quick example, I'm going to go into the kick channel. So we have our sample here feeding into an SSL channel, feeding into a transient designer, looks like this, and into the Ableton saturation plugin. Let's just look at this for a second and see what we have here. So you could clearly see that we have this little overlight shining here, which means that the processor is already having a problem with taking in that signal. I'm also using a little bit of compression, which brings the signal down, but you can already tell that this is a problem. And then when you look at this here, the transient designer, this is gain reduction here. So even if I don't want this to act as a limiter, it acts as a limiter right now. It's reducing the gain quite significantly and dealing with a signal that's way too hot. And I actually don't really get the benefits of the transient designer as much. It has like a internal gain reduction circuit that does exactly that. How do you now solve this? How do you make sure that your gain staging is accurate and that every processor in the chain gets exactly the optimal signal level and then all of these optimal signal levels feed into the master channel in the right way. Now that's exactly where a lot of problematic YouTube advice is being spread out. There's supposed to be this magical signal level of minus 18 dBFS, which is supposed to be exactly the sweet spot for most digital emulations of analog plugins. And in my experience as a professional mixing and mastering engineer, this is simply not true. There is no such thing as the perfect sweet spot for equipment in the digital domain. And most plugin developers these days, they take into account that the typical user is working with much hotter levels. So don't worry about any of these so-called rules or magical signal levels because in my experience, this is total BS. Now that this myth is out of the way, I will show you my step-by-step -step system of gain staging. I do it like that as a professional mixing and mastering engineer. Most of my colleagues also follow this approach. And this is something you can trust without any minus 18 dBFS rule that makes no sense. By the way, if you got something out of this so far, then please make sure to subscribe. It would mean the world to me. It is a signal that I'm on the right track with this channel. I also love to answer the comments. If you have something you want to share, I'm most likely going to reply. So leave a comment below and let me know what you think of this. All right, let's now fix that mess. And the first thing we need to do is to bring all the faders to unity gain. Unity gain means the faders are at zero and every signal that comes in goes out of it exactly in the same way. So what you do is you simply control click all the individual channels. So control double click here. And now everything is at unity gain. If I were to press play now, everything would be way too loud. It would not work at all. But this is the first step to great gain staging. Now, the next rule is to always start at the source of the audio. Start at the source of the audio and make sure you have a healthy headroom. Now, what does that mean and how does it work? So I personally try to have the peaks of every individual channel between minus 12 dBFS to minus 6 dBFS, depending on how I want it to be in the mix. I don't control this with the channel fader, I control this with the audio source. So the closer you can get to the source, the better. This is where you adjust it first of all and then all the following processes 
will get fed a healthy signal with enough headroom, but still a great signal to noise ratio. Let's take a look at our kick drum channel as an example. So first of all, I'm going to solo this so that you don't hear the other tracks that are way too loud. And here inside of our kick drum channel, we have to basically bring down the signal so that it sits somewhere around the minus 12 to minus six dB mark. There are several ways to do this. You can either adjust it here in the filter slash global setting. This will be the global volume, or you go here into the sample and you adjust it here. So both ways are possible. And by the way, you can also save these settings as a default preset for something like the sampler, because then every time you load in a really hot sample, it's already yeah, being added with a little bit of headroom so that your overall chain starts relatively close to what the right sweet spot is. So I'm going to bring this down to minus 12 and let's take a listen and a look here. So it's still like a little bit hot maybe because of the other following processes. Let's just mute everything that follows. Yeah, perfect. So we have a healthy headroom here, but you can already tell that the gain staging is off because when I add these other effects, it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. So this is like additional gain that was just added by the following processes. So let's mute everything now again. This is what the kick drum sounds like. And then step by step, we walk through the chain and make sure that every processor gets a healthy signal level. Let's now bring up our SSL channel strip here. So let's look at this. You can see the level is much more healthy compared to what we had before. But then obviously our compressor is not working at all. So we have to adjust the threshold of the compressor so that we get kind of the sound that we had to begin with. And then there's also a lot of EQing going on, which is mainly boosting. So this is boosting, it's a little bit cutting here, a little bit cutting here, and here in the low end again boosting, which obviously adds gain to the signal. Now what you want to do is to simply by ear, not necessarily by metering, by ear you want to adjust more or less that the gain that goes into the signal is almost the level that goes out of the signal. So. Let's just adjust it here and this way I will use the output fader of this specific plugin. This will be the correct point for gain staging here. So this is pretty much exactly what I want it to be. Signal in, more or less signal out. And you don't have to be super strict with exactly the tiniest fraction of a dB being correct here. Let's now look at our next plugin here. So we have this transient designer here. Now works with a really healthy signal already. And I can just dial in exactly the settings that I want. I, if I want a bit more clickiness, I can just increase the attack here. If I want less sustain, I can bring it down or I can add more sustain. But to be honest with you, the original setting I think was great. And once again, we want to see that more or less the same signal that goes into this also goes out to this. And if not, we can adjust it here with the output gain. Yes, here this is working really, really well because I'm already taking away a little bit of the sustain, adding a little bit of this attack. So more or less this evens out. And by the way, this is a really subtle effect. So I'm not overdoing this in any way here. Okay, great. Now onto the saturator. Let's just mute the saturator and then put it in. Now this is a heavy increase in level. I will just bring this down a little bit here on the output. So this is more or less correct. It's a tiny bit louder, but that's definitely within the ballpark still. So that is our kick chain. It's already solved and you can see there's a healthy level here and then a healthy level feeding into our master. And we still have enough headroom for other elements. Let's now go into some other things, correct everything and then see what we end up with. So gain staging can be especially problematic when you don't take care of it in the low end, because in low end, typically distortion becomes really easily audible. And so here on our rumble track, which sounds like this, we are boosting this rumble frequency and you can see it's clipping here at the output of the plugin. And you also see that the channel itself 
just is overshooting. Now, even if I bring this fader down, the result will still be the same because it sounds distorted because it's clipping here. The easiest way to take care of that is just by decreasing the output here. So if you see this is overshooting 2.2 dB, you just bring this down more or less 2.2 dB and then it's gonna be fine. So a little bit of grittiness is in the original sample, so don't worry about that, but at least we're not clipping yet. We're not adding on top of that grittiness even more grit unless sometimes you even want digital distortion. So it's not like a fixed rule that you can never clip anything in the digital domain. Not at all. So you can do this, but do it purposefully if you want it. But this would be a really easy way. A lot of plugins also have an auto feature where you can automatically compensate for something. I'm not a big fan. So this has an auto gain here. To me, in many cases, it just doesn't sound exactly right. Sometimes it's taking away too much. Sometimes it's taking away not enough. And so I personally like to do this still by ear and it's just a really good habit to do this. So this is fine now, but overall, as you can see, this is still too loud. So we're pretty close to the zero line here. Once again, we don't bring it down in the fader. We go to the source. Now the source in this case is a rumble sample and Instead of Ableton, you can adjust the clip gain here. This would be the correct way to gain stage this individual element. And a lot of people just don't do this. They forget that you can even do this. And I think this is a really overlooked feature. So let's just bring this down. Like this. And already we have a really clean signal to work with. Now, I'm not going to bore you with every individual channel. Let's jump straight to the last one, which is our lead synth. And for this, I have the Serum VST, a little bit of chord and arpeggio before that. So this is generating the MIDI notes. And then I have Serum running. Now, Serum, if you load it up, any like standard preset comes with way too hot of a level. So whatever you select, it's going to be too hot, period. The problem is if I now send this into a delay, for example, and then into a reverb, those are especially sensitive to signals that are too high. So especially reverb just sounds like crap if it's being pushed too hard. Let me just solo this for a moment and look at this. <laughs> You can already see like the reverb is overshooting here. This is really problematic. And especially when the filter resonance is being driven through the modulation with an LFO, you can hear that it's getting really, really gritty in a slightly unpleasant digital way. Now we definitely need to adjust this. And once again, we want to start at the source. Now the source here is a little bit tricky. You could on the one hand, you could just go to the level setting here on the individual oscillators, but I really like the balance of the oscillators right now. So you can just simply go to the master here, bring this down. Let's first of all mute the following plugins and we bring this down until we have a healthy signal. <laughs> Okay, great. And then let's bring in this one. Now here input and output are almost the same. So I think we don't have to do anything here. Maybe slightly adjust the output, but not too much. And then let's look at our reverb here. Looks great. Output and input are more or less the same. You could theoretically also adjust this, but in this case, this is where I'm not being too strict. It just sounds much better already. When I mute that chain, it's more or less the same as the thing that we started with. And overall, we're getting closer to a really healthy signal in our complete mix. Now I will quickly adjust the rest of the channels and then show you what the final result of a balanced gain staged mix sounds like and looks like, and then we can fine tune it. And by the way, just because it's gain staged properly does not mean that it's already balanced well in terms of mixing. So gain staging just means everything that goes in is also going out in more or less the same way and every processor in the middle is being hit with a healthy signal level. But still, this is why I keep the faders at unity gain. You can then adjust the faders obviously to create a mix, a balance that you actually want to have in your production. All right, so I have now gain staged everything correctly and I want you to pay attention to the levels of the individual channels here, 
just watch the meters and then also check out what the limiter here in Ableton is doing. Which is very interesting because it's barely doing anything. I will play this now for you and you just listen to it and watch out for the levels. <laughs> So I hope you could see that there is a little bit of limiter action going on, but it's not audible at all. This is simply a protective measure. And yes, if you were to export this for mastering, I would even bring everything down a bit more. But like I said, we haven't even balanced the mix. So this is just gain staging done properly. And now we can get into actually working with the faders and creating a balance that makes sense for this production. So the way I like to do this is to just follow my gut instinct and use the kick and maybe a lead element together to create the original balance, make sure that there's enough headroom left on the master channel and then I bring in the rest to taste to give me a good starting point. Let's do this now. So I bring everything down except for my kick and even the lead I bring down because I want to feed this in according to the kick drum. So kick drum is at unity gain, peaking around minus 12 dBFS, maybe a little bit higher, and then I can bring in the rest. So by no means is this a perfect mix, but you can easily test how everything comes together when you then, for example, test out what a slight mastering chain on the master channel might sound like, throwing stuff into a limiter, seeing how it performs when it's pushed a little bit harder. And all of this is now possible because we have enough headroom. So I would do it like this. First of all, get rid of the Ableton limiter because I simply don't like its sound. I personally like the Fairfilter Pro L2. And what you can do here is you can then set this to one to one input output, meaning that this is automatically compensating for the gain. So here in this case, I'm just testing how it sounds when everything is like a little bit denser. You can do it like this. And it's very interesting, I'm getting very little distortion compared to what we originally started with. And if I were to deactivate this now, we would end up with something that is pretty close to the level of a final master of a finalized production. <laughs> So this to me sounds much better, it's less muddy and obviously there's a ton we could do in terms of mixing here, but the gain staging problem is solved. We have enough headroom on our master channel, we can try out how it sounds in a more pushed, limited way without everything distorting like crazy. It sounds actually quite good still, even if it isn't perfectly mixed yet. One final workflow tip for you, I try to keep my faders untouched until the very last phase of the mixing process. I want to be able to do fine adjustments really late in the process if I want to fine tune things to hit the mix bus perfectly before going into my mastering chain. And so the way I work with levels before that is I use a Ableton utility plugin. You can use any gain adjustment plugin out there. I use this as the very last tool in my chain. So I can do volume automations and level adjustments on this tool and then still have my level on the fader of that channel available at the very last stage of the mixing process. This is a super helpful workflow habit that I've adopted and I really recommend you do this as well. 
All right, I would like to hear from you now. What about this has resonated with you the most? Do you have any follow-up questions? If so, leave a comment below. I'm happy to answer your questions. I want no one to be confused and I want maximum clarity about gain staging. I do this for a living, so I'm happy to help anyone out there who's struggling with gain staging or getting clean and impactful mixes. Thanks for watching. Until next time, see you.